Nan Golden, the subject of Laura Poitrasoko Venice Film Festival winning documentary OC Pound All the Beauty and the Bloodshed is a name you probably either know well or not at all. In the art world, she is unequivocally famous. Her photographs depicting downtown life in the late 1970s and 80s and the vibrant, glamorous bohemians she encountered on the scene, like John Waters' It Girl Cookie Mueller, have been displayed at the Whitney, the Tate and MoMA. To look at any of the photos in her most well-known work, the ever-evolving slideshow OC Pound The Ballad of Sexual Dependency you can see how influential she was on generations to come with her raw, public-private snapshots of parties that did no cot end until dawn, beautiful OC Pound queens and even her face, one month after a OC Pound dope sick boyfriend beat her so badly she almost lost her eye. The New York Times review of a collection of those photographs at the time said that O.C. Pound the Ballad was to the 1980s what Robert Francico's O.C. Pound the Americans was to the 1950s. And it would become a devastating document of many of the young lives lost in the AIDS epidemic. This is only part of Goldenico's story, as you'll learn in O.C. Pound All the Beauty and the Bloodshed which begins its theatrical run this week in New York before expanding to more markets in the coming weeks. Poitras the Oscar-winning filmmaker behind O.C. Pound Citizen 4 started filming Golden to document her protest efforts against museums accepting money from the Sackler family. Their company, Purdue Pharma, developed and marketed the widely prescribed and widely abused painkiller OxyContin, the brand name for the opioid oxycodone. Opioids, which also include fentanyl, have been linked to more than 500,000 deaths in the U.S. over the past two decades. Golden several years ago found herself addicted to opioids which she was prescribed for a surgery and took according to instructions. But, she said, she became addicted overnight. When she got out of treatment, she started reading about Purdue and the Sacklers, a name she associated with museums and philanthropy. Sackler-run foundations have given many millions of dollars to some of the world Oco's most prestigious museums and universities, from the Guggenheim to Oxford. And her mission became clear, to use her status in the art world to get museums to stop accepting money from the Sacklers, take down their name from galleries and to change how we think about addiction and treatment. And partially as a result of her efforts, many museums from the Louvre to the Met, have distanced themselves from the Sacklers. Poitras smartly saw that there was a very clear through line from what Golden did in the 80s, when she came out of rehab and saw all her friends dying of AIDS, and what she was doing now. The documentary weaves together these threads to make a holistic portrait of an artist's battle cry. Though the Sackler protests are the hook, the film Oco's strongest portions are its historical ones. Poitras artfully overlays Golden Oco's heartbreaking eloquence with her photographs and a camera shutter soundtrack. Golden speaks about everything from her stifling childhood in suburbia to the ripple effect of her older sister Barbara Coe's teenage institutionalization to her death by suicide at age 18 that left Nan, then Nancy Golden, bouncing between foster homes. It was no caught until she found a camera that she found her voice and her true family, her friends. There are some particularly devastating family realizations that Poitras and Golden save for last. It's tried to call that an origin story, but with Golden, everything stemmed from those confusing days. Shioka had been told early on never to let the neighbors know about their troubles. Brushing it under the rug, not talking about it and not dealing with it would destroy them, though. Golden might not have known it when she started photographing her LGBTQ friends, but her work has always been about looking at the so-called fringe cultures in society about showing the problems that the masses would rather just ignore and making them so urgent that you cannot look away anymore. It is an act of hope in the idea that things could be better because the alternative, the silence, is infinitely worse. Golden would know. As Golden says at the start, O.C. Pound Idaco's easy to make your life into a story. But Idaco's harder to sustain real memories. O.C. Pound the real memories are what affect me now she continued. O.C. Pound even if you don't caught actually unleash the memories, the effect is there, Idaco's in your body. O.C. Pound all the beauty and the bloodshed a neon release and limited release now, expanding on, has not been rated by the Motion Picture Association. Running time, 117 minutes.
three and a half stars out of four. Okukuko in a story published November 25, 2022, reviewing OC Pound All the Beauty and the Bloodshed The Associated Press erroneously reported that OxyContin had been responsible for more than 500,000 overdose deaths in the U.S. That death toll is attributed generally to opioids, which include oxycodone and fentanyl. Okukuko follow AP film writer Lindsay Barr on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash ldbarr.